Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my video all about rune light. So I get asked quite a lot what my settings are in rune light uh, and how do I do certain things and to be honest with you, a lot of the time the answer is plugins. Plugins are absolutely amazing for RuneLight. And if you've ever used it before, you'll understand how powerful some of these plugins are. So I'm going to go over some of my favorite ones today and some of the ones that I use quite a lot and people ask me a lot of questions about. Uh, that being said, though, there are lots of plugins in RuneLight. So if you'd like to see a part two of this, drop a comment down below and let me know. And also let me know what your favorite plugin is and maybe we'll feature it in the future. As you can see, I currently play in Resizable. And if you're wondering how to get the bar down the bottom like this, just go to settings, go to all settings head over to interface and then set it to resizable modern layout a lot of people have it like this and don't know how to get the barrel across the bottom just change that to modern layout that's all you need to know right enough about that let's go on to the plugins but before we do a quick word from today's sponsor one military camp is a strategy simulation management game set in a military world with humorous vibes. You can build your military camp from scratch, specialize your soldiers in different areas, and complete special missions to advance your adventure. The game is currently under development, but is set to be released next year, so you can add the game to your wish list on Steam today. The goal of the game is to make your military base profitable and win the war. Join our troops today and add the game to your wish list. You can do that by heading to the description or the pinned comment clicking my personal link a massive thank you to one military camp for sponsoring today's video let's get into the content All right, so the very first plugin I want to show you is just a default rune light plugin. There are a few settings in here which are quite nice to set up. Uh, personally, I do like to have my game client set as this. Uh, by the way, just to get to any plugins in rune light, you click on the spanner at the top right over here, uh, and you'll have a list of all the plugins. You can also access third-party plugins by clicking the plugin hub. Uh, everything that's in here, by the way, and everything that I mentioned has been approved by Jagex, so there's nothing in there that'll get you banned, so you don't have to worry about that. As long as you're using the official rune light client, which can be downloaded by runelight.net. I'll leave a link in the description, but be very careful clicking links on the internet. So just go to runelight.net, download it from there. So again, uh, we're going to be searching for the runelight plugin. Click on the edit plugin configuration, uh, and then I'm just going to show you which settings I have. Now, I play on a 27-inch 1440p monitor, and this is the client size I like to have. Uh, I'm not going to read over absolutely everything in here. If you can see what they do, like they're pretty self-explanatory. If you're confused about anything, if you hover over it, it tells you exactly what it does, which again is very, very useful. Uh, I'm just going to scroll down so you guys can see what I have. This will come in handy later on, especially with like, the notification settings and stuff like that. I don't like to have my rune light pop up in my notification tray on Windows 10. Uh, that can be quite frustrating sometimes and also make sounds and stuff like that. So I just disable that. Uh, I'd rather just have it off. And again, these are just the normal settings that we have. So that's the default settings of rune light. You know how I have my runescape set up now. So that's everything out of the way. Let's go on to the actual plugin, shall we? The first one I want to go over is the bank plugin. Now, I know you've probably heard this one before. However, I bet there's something you didn't know that you could do with this. This is the rune light. Oh, this, sorry, this is the default bank. I don't have the plugin turned on at the moment. doesn't really have much on it. If I try and search for um, like a bandos item or something like that, it'll show you bandos items in your tabs. Very, very useful. Uh, if I go over to the bank plugin though and turn it on, there are a few settings that you can have in here. For example, you can show your grand exchange price. So when we open up the bank, Shows your grand exchange price. Do you want to see the high alt price? Enable it. Refresh the bank so you have to close it and reopen it again. Shows the high alt value. You can also show the exacts and stuff like that. That's not really what I wanted to show you guys. As I said, it is quite useful. However, what a lot of people don't know is you can actually search for values. As long as you have this plugin enabled, if I want to search for anything that's over 1 million GP, for example, do the greater key or the... Uh, the arrow to the right, which is greater than, and type 1 mil. And that'll show you everything in your bank that is over 1 mil. It does include stacks in there. So as you can see, like, obviously, my adamant, an adamant dart itself isn't worth 1 mil. But adamant darts on their own are worth, the, the entire stack is worth, let's have a quick look, 1.6 million GP. And you can also do the same thing if you want to see what anything is less than 10 GP. There you go. Maybe you're clearing your bank out and you've got through absolutely everything that you think is tradable and you're left with untradables only do a quick search for anything above one gp and i'll show you absolutely everything you want to know everything that's untradable minus one gp there you go now you've got everything that's untradable within the bank as i said it is a very very useful feature to have and i bet a lot of you didn't know that was in there All right, the next plugin I want to show you guys is the Bank Text B plugin. Now, the Bank Text B plugin isn't a plugin that is on the default RuneLight client. So, what you need to do is head to the plugin hub, do a quick search in here for Banked EXP, and it's this one right here by the Stoned Turtle. If you just click install on that, and then once it's installed, head back, search for Banked XP. 
Uh, make sure it's turned on. There are a few settings in here as well. Again, I'm not going to go too much into these, but you can just go through, hover over them, and they'll tell you exactly what they say. But when you enable this plugin, as you can see, you will get this icon, which is like a little banked XP icon. Click on that, and then you'll get a drop down. Now, if you open up your bank, you'll need to open your bank at least once so it knows exactly what's in here. But if I go to, for example, cooking, it will calculate how much XP I have actually banked at this moment of time with all the raw fish that are in the bank. Uh, it also does wines and things as well. Unfortunately, we don't have any at the moment, but anything that gives cooking XP. Uh, and if you click on each icon as well, you can actually see like I've got 2.1 million XP there in regards to Karen Blinds. Now, of course, it doesn't account for you burning stuff, but it's a very, very good tool to use, especially if you're like looking for herb lore or stuff, like how much how much herb lore uh, XP do I have banked? Also, a good thing with this is if you click on the potions, you can actually select which potions you're going to be making or which secondaries you're going to be making. You can also, of course, exclude anything and it'll ignore the entire item stack. And that also means that it will no longer uh, make the secondaries and things like that for it. So it's a very, very useful tool to have. This has helped me out so much on my Iron Man. And these are all the categories you can use. One of the plugins that I probably get the most questions about is the inventory setups plugins. Now the inventory setup is not in the default RuneLine client. So again, head down to the plugin hub, type in inventory, and you'll see here the inventory setups by Dilly Dill123. Install that one uh, and that'll show you, well, when, once you enable it, you might have to come in here first. So inventory setup, inventory setup, make sure it is actually turned on. As you can see, it's turned on and you'll see this icon appear on the on the right hand side. Again, if I turn it off, it disappears, turn it on. It appears. Uh, I don't have anything set up in here. I left everything as default, but you can go through and customize this as again, however you want to. But if you click on the guy, the T-Pose over here, you can see that I currently have some inventory setups in here already. However, yours will be completely blank. Now it's very, very easy to add a new setup. So for example, uh, just grab some gear out. It doesn't matter if it's food or whatever. It honestly does not matter. Uh, you can wear your items as well. Uh, if you've got certain things in a room pouch, for example, uh, all you need to do is get everything that you need in your inventory, click on the plus icon, and that will add a new inventory setup. So we're going to call this one, actually, we'll call it AA test. So it's at the top. Uh, as you can see, that is now there, and it shows everything in the order that it's already in. It also remembers which spellbook I'm on, uh, and you can add on like notes and stuff like this, so testing, so you know exactly what it is and what you're doing with this. Uh, again, this is incredibly powerful. One other really cool thing about this that a lot of people don't know about is you can go back, change this, so click on the burger icon. I don't know what else you call that. I think it's the hamburger like icon. Click on the filter icon here and then go into the bank and click on the view setup. It'll actually take you to everything in your bank so you know exactly where everything is, which is amazing. Uh, this is something that I honestly did not know about at first. One of my friends told me about it and it's been such a game changer ever since. Now, how can we mention a top rune light plugins without mentioning any of the GPU plugins? Now, there's three that I want to go over, but I won't spend too much time on any of them. Uh, I'm going to kind of run over them nice and quick. But the first one is the default rune light GPU plugin. First of all, let's mention, of course, the rune light graphics themselves look very dated. They have a certain characteristic and a certain charm to them, but they're not for everyone. They do look very jagged and a bit janky, even the new areas like Priftinus. Uh, as beautiful as they do look, they definitely look better in HD, in my opinion. Now, this isn't for everyone, which is why I've left them till the end of the video. But of course, if you go into the rune light plugin settings, uh, go to GPU. Again, this is installed by default. The GPU plugin just makes everything a little bit cleaner. As you can see, it makes everything a bit smoother and stuff like that. Um, it, it in my opinion it just looks so much better and this is a good compromise if you like the old graphics but you want it to look a little bit better uh, you can also see that the view distance is massive compared to before uh, you can actually change that within the settings i have my draw distance to 90 uh, you can change it back though if you want it like at 30 or something which is roughly what the default one is at anyway uh, i also have fog enabled and stuff like that i'm not going to go e over each and individual thing again if you want to know what they are just turn them on and off enable them disable them have a quick read of them the only thing that i'd say is pointless turning up on here is the antiscopic filtering whether you have it on 16 or 0 for me it makes absolutely no difference like it, it literally doesn't even change the game for me so i'm not too sure if that's just bugged or something but for me i have it set to zero because it just doesn't do anything the other plugin of course is the 117 hd beta or beta if you're american which looks phenomenal now this really does change the game it is a beautiful plugin this is what i play runescape in most of the time and again i'm going to quickly go over my settings now there is a new setting on here called winter theme which has only just been released but i'll enable that in a second once we've gone through everything once again i'm not going to go through absolutely everything in here there is a few things i want to explain to you guys when i get to it but 
These are the settings that I have. Again, I have a 144 hertz monitor, so I have V-Sync off and 144 hertz as my target. Uh, unlock FPS as well. So we're going through this. As you can see, these are all the settings I have. I have mine quite bright as well. 30 is quite bright. However, I feel like if I have anything less in videos, it does look very dim. So be careful with that. You can turn on dynamic lighting, atmospheric lighting as well for a bit more uh, immersive stuff. Tempros and stuff with like dynamic lighting on is phenomenal. Uh, also as well, like Draenor Manor and things like that. I have all mine turned off though. Again, just for video quality, I like the brightness. I think it comes through more. But if I do need anything like that, I can always turn it back on. Now the one thing I'm going to say is these shadows are amazing. However, I have a uh, RTX 2080. And when I'm doing TLB, if I'm at Verzik and I have this on extreme, you best believe my PC is freezing when I'm streaming. Um, I have mine set to high. The difference is minimal. Like the, the shadow quality literally just changes the quality of the shadows. If I put it on low, you'll understand what I mean. Um, but like between, the difference between high and extreme is so minimal. I just always have mine on high now. and It doesn't cause me any issues, but um yeah this is something that you're gonna have to play around with again these are the settings that i have uh, i do usually have my um my fog on quite deep but i quite like it at the one now i i, I have mine just set at one and it's quite nice i kind of like having it just set to one on this uh there's a miscellaneous setting as well i don't like that the, the tazar reskin but you guys might like that it's not for me the water effects as well look absolutely amazing i have some b-roll footage i could show you guys real quick actually but um yeah th this plugin is just in its own world it's, it's fantastic something that i definitely recommend checking out uh, again the 117 plugin by the way is a plugin from the plugin hub so if you go to plugin hub search for 117 and it will appear there uh, there's only one of them in there it's obviously made by 117 And the last plugin I want to go into is the low detail plugin. Now, this actually just turns off a lot of the layers on the ground floor, which on the 117 plugin, it doesn't look that great in my opinion. I quite like having all the details and stuff. I think it like pops a lot more. However, if you turn off the 117 plugin and go to the GPU plugin, when you turn on a low detail on this, I actually really like it. It makes it look like cartoony. I don't know how to explain it. I think the, the one of the best places to show this really would be the crafting guild. That's my construction cape. But if I head over to the crafting guild now, uh, let me just turn off low detail again for a second. So this is what the crafting guild looks like in the area. If I turn on low detail, I don't know. I just think it looks a little more pleasing on the eye. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Like, I, I know a lot of people do like this as well, but it's just something that you might enjoy. It changes quite a lot. It takes away most of the grass and things like that and like little rocks on the floor. Um, but yeah, just have a play about with it. You guys might like it. I really like it personally. I mix between having it on and off, even with the 117 HD plugin, uh, which again is just a phenomenal plugin. The reflections on the water as well look like just insanely good. Anyway, uh, I think that's pretty much it for me. I've been waffling for quite some time. If you would like any other videos on like Runelight plugins and stuff like that, please let me know. I have literally an entire spreadsheet of just like plugins that I like to use, good things about them. But I realize this video has been going on for quite some time now, so I want to wrap it up. But if you guys did enjoy this video, don't forget to smash that like button. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. And of course, a massive thank you to the Patreons. Your names are on the screen right now. You guys are freaking legends. And I honestly don't know what to do without you. Love you guys. Take care. Peace out, everyone, and I'll see you soon.